UGRC 210 Academic Writing uh, 2. My name is Dr. Gordon S.K. Adikaf. Um, today we're going to look at methods of developing a controlling idea in a paragraph. One central message sounded several times in Unit 1 was the point that for your paragraph to be considered a good one, it has to contain only one main idea that you have developed with relevant supporting details. This unit revolves around methods that are used in developing the main idea. You will discover that some ideas are made clearer when supporting details illustrate or exemplify them. Some other ideas are about processes. So in order to clarify them, you might need to analyze the different steps or aspects of the processes. For some ideas, the clarification needed is in the form of a definition and or an explanation or a comparison and or a contrast of one thing to another. You might also develop an idea effectively if you show that one thing causes another to happen or that one thing constitutes the problem for which there is or isn't a remedy. I shall explain each of these methods or patterns of development of controlling ideas in separate sections. What are objectives? Upon completion of this unit, you'll be able to one, differentiate one method of developing a controlling idea from another, two, decide which method would be appropriate for developing a given controlling idea, and three, have ample practice of each of the methods mentioned in the unit. This unit will cover the following topics. Section one, we shall look at illustrations. Section two, we'll deal with process analysis. In section three, we shall focus on definitions. Section four, we'll deal with comparison and contrast. Section five, cause and effect and problem and solution and the last section, section six, will focus on classification and division. So now let's consider illustrations. Let me welcome you once again to the first section of unit two. In this section, you will learn to write paragraphs in which illustrations or examples are required to clarify the main point you wish to express. In our daily conversations, we often provide examples, that is, details, particulars, and specific instances to illustrate and explain statements that we make. Illustrations or examples are the building blocks of most writing. Now take your pen and jotter, relax, and follow me as we discover how to develop ideas in this type of paragraph. Now, what are our specific objectives for this section? By the end of this section, you will be able to provide a series of examples to support your topic sentence or main idea, and also discover that examples lend support and authority to all types of writing. What are illustrations or examples? An illustration is a means of using specific situations and examples to reveal the essential points about your topic or to reinforce your topic sentence. In arguing that horror films are harmful, for instance, you might mention several films that demonstrate the qualities you object to. If you want to discuss the topic bad jobs, for example, you'll have to talk about difficult bosses, low job, low pay, long working hours, unpleasant co-workers, and a poor working environment to support your topic. Now let's look at the following short paragraph. Accra is a very busy city. That is our topic sentence. Accra is a very busy city. The roads are always busy. The shops are full of people 
from the time they open until closing time. Its multitude of restaurants and nightclubs are filled to capacity throughout the week. People are forever rushing in. People are forever rushing. In fact, there appears to be hustle and bustle in every sphere of life in Accra. The examples given in the, in the paragraph we've just seen clarifies or clarify the statement that Accra is a very busy city. In essay writing too, explanatory examples make ideas concrete by connecting them to situations within the reader's experience. An unfamiliar term or an abstract idea becomes clear once an example is provided. Go back to section two of unit one to read the expanded version of the paragraph we just looked at. Take note of how each major support sentence, thus each illustration, is further supported by specific examples. Now it is your time to look at an activity, take time off and consider this exercise carefully. We shall move on to the next segment of this section. We're now going to consider the characteristics of illustrations. Now you need to use examples to support general um, statements. Examples are an effective way to support general statements. You already know that most paragraphs begin with topic sentences, which tell what the paragraph um, will be about. When we develop a paragraph by using major and minor supporting details, we are providing examples to support our topic sentence. For example, if I make the statement, most adult um, students are energetic, ambitious, and eager to get ahead in life, I need to describe several students who demonstrate energy and ambition. Some students work full-time or part-time to cover tuition costs. One of them is the mother of two young children, and another never misses classes despite the distance that he needs to travel to get to school. In writing illustrations, therefore, you need to do the following. One, use examples to explain or clarify unfamiliar topics. That's one. When your audience has little or no knowledge of your topic, you need to use examples to help them understand it. Let me go over this point again. In other words, you use illustrations to explain or clarify unfamiliar topics, right? So when your audience has little or no knowledge of your topic, you need to use examples to help them understand it. You also use illustrations to explain difficult concepts. Many concepts are difficult for readers to understand by definition alone. For instance, a reader might guess that the term urbanization um, a key word in society has something to do with cities. Defining the concept as, say, the process by which an area becomes part of a city will explain it up to a point. But giving examples of formerly suburban areas that have become urban will make the concept immediately understandable. You also use illustrations to explain or clarify abstract terms. Abstract terms refer to ideas rather than to people or to concrete things you can see and touch. Terms such as truth and justice are abstract and therefore difficult to understand. Examples then will help to clarify them. In other cases, however, Abstract terms mean different things to different people. Suppose you use the term unfair to describe how your father treats you and your siblings. Your readers might have different ideas of fairness. Providing examples of your father's unfair treatment would make your meaning clearer. You should also use carefully selected examples. The examples you use to explain your topic sentence or main idea should be carefully chosen. Select examples that are relevant, representative, accurate, 
and striking. Relevant examples are those that have a direct and clear relationship with your main idea. An example is representative when it shows a typical or real life situation, not a rare or unusual one. In addition, be sure that the examples you include are accurate. Report information as exactly as it is and provide your readers with enough information about the source so that they can evaluate the reliability of that information if they want to. Finally, choose examples that are striking and dramatic and that will make a strong, lasting impression on your readers. It is time for you now to do an activity. When providing examples to support your topic sentence, you need to ask yourself a basic question. Will the examples or illustrations you have provided clarify each of these terms to anyone who doesn't know their meaning? If they will not, then they are not good. Test your answers on some of your friends and take note of, your, of their reactions. There's another activity um, for you to do. At this juncture, I would like to summarize um, for us the things that we have learned under illustrations as a method of development. In this section, you have learned to appreciate the advantages that come with providing a series of examples to support your main idea in a paragraph. That is the fact that the, these examples help your readers to fully understand your point of view. You have also learned to write good illustration paragraphs by using examples to clarify or explain difficult concepts, abstract terms, and unfamiliar and topics. And by using carefully selected examples that are relevant, representative, and accurate. In the next section, we shall consider another pattern of development, that is process analysis.